welcome back to the afternoon session. We're on our final stretch. And you will see on your agenda, we were supposed to have Jordan Walbesser from Mattel here. I had my outfit ready, my Barbie outfit. I had some ideas for him. Uh, like, we need to have a metaverse that's all Ryan Gosling. I mean, Ken. I mean, I was ready for him, and he's not here. So I can't fill in because I'm not that knowledgeable, but we have some awesome, awesome panelists that are going to give us some really deep insights on collectibles and community. So we've got a couple of great speakers. We've got our moderator, Chris Miller, who's from Flaunt, who actually sponsored this session. And Flaunt helps enterprise brands enter and scale their Web3 presence with digital assets, community co-creation, and connected experiences that create a new sense of ownership and fandom among customers. Chris is the co-founder and chief revenue officer for Flaunt, and he believes that Web3 tech enables brands to create more engaging relationships with customers than ever before. His solo panelist is Jeff Alexander, the president and CEO of WowBow. They entered the mass online retail space and joined the metaverse with the first of its kind Web3 loyalty program. So please welcome Chris and Jeff. Thanks, everybody. Um, as Kristen mentioned, my name is Chris Miller, uh, co-founder and chief revenue officer at a company called Flaunt. Uh, we're helping brands rethink loyalty um, more broadly, also their, their loyalty programs and how some of these new technologies and strategies might weave their way in. Um, I, am, I have the distinguished honor of sitting next to uh, Mr. Jeff Alexander, who uh, is otherwise known as the king of Chicago. So um, Jeff, would you please give a, a quick introduction to yourself uh, talk uh, just a, a little bit about WowBow. We'll, we'll kind of dive into that more uh, in, in, in more detail later. And then maybe share a fun fact that people wouldn't know from just looking at your LinkedIn. Okay, well, thank you for having me. You know, I always wanted like beatbox and rap, and now that I'm holding a mic like this, I'm used to a lavalier, but I won't, I won't do that to you. Um, this is my first like digital uh, type of this event, and I've been amazed with the speakers. I hope you guys have enjoyed what you've heard so far. So I just shout out to everyone who's gone before us. I hope the two of us do as well as they have, because I've learned a lot today. Uh, Jeff Alexander, I am a partner with a company called Let Us Entertain You. It is a restaurant group here in Chicago. 52-year privately held restaurant group. I like the smiles and the nods for those of you who heard of Let Us Entertain You. Uh, we've created over 250 different concepts over the last 52 years. We operate in six states, 160-something restaurants, 60-something uh, different concepts. Joined them in 1993. 2003, we started a restaurant called WowBow, W-O-W-B-A-O. -O -O. And uh, I took it over in 09. We had uh, started the Water Tower Place 354, 384 square foot uh, hot bun concept. Over the last... 14 years or so that I've been involved with it. We've done sports stadiums, college campuses, airports, music festivals. We've done a fully automated restaurant, actually three of them, where you walk in and you have zero human interaction. Uh, you order off your phone or an iPad uh, in the restaurant and your food gets delivered through an, uh, an automated cubby that's animated with personalized name on it, animation, very, very cool. We don't do them anymore though. Uh, and uh, we can talk about why later. But, uh, 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 and then in 2017, private equity got involved to help fund our growth. And in 2019, we had the idea to let other restaurants sell our product out their back door, third party delivery as a virtual restaurant. Launched our first one in January 2020, and then the world changed. And from April 2020 till now, we've done over 700 locations across the US and Canada. We also, uh, in 10 weeks, we will surpass 4,000 grocery stores with our frozen product and 1,500 sushi counters with our fresh product. So we do a lot with food. And I don't have a lot of fun facts outside of my LinkedIn because I keep it up to date. So for those who have not checked out my LinkedIn, everyone always gets impressed that I teach a spin class once a week on Saturday mornings. So if you're still here on Saturday, we can uh, ride 16 or 20 miles together. We'll share the location of that uh, spin class afterwards. Um, and, and obviously, uh, unfortunately, Jordan was, was able to join us today. Um, as, as Kristen mentioned, um, we're all thinking about Jordan. Um, but that means that there's, uh, I had about 10 questions prepared for each panelist, and now I only have one panelist. So 
we're going to need some audience participation. So if you've ever wanted to ask the CEO of a restaurant chain uh, any question at all, the next 35 minutes is, is going to be your chance after we get done with some q and Jordan here. did send a message that he said he agreed with every comment I say today, <laughs> just so you know that. He thought I was a genius in the prep. So, Jeff, uh, WowBow recently launched a Web3 loyalty program, um, and I would love for you to just tell the audience a little bit about the program, uh, as well as sort of the impetus behind it. Sure. So, I'm going to back up a year ago to March of 2022. So, as I said, we have these 700 locations around the U.S. and Canada that do uh, virtual dining. And for those of you who have ordered food from Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Grubhub, you understand that you have no relationship with the restaurant, right? Except when you're upset that the sauce didn't get put in the bag. Then you call the restaurant to yell at them. But there's no relationship. So we wanted to launch a, a, a loyalty program to help get the communication back between us and the consumer. We wanted to build trust and we wanted to build uh, community. But there's really no loyalty in the delivery space, right? When you open up your app, you're in the mood for pizza and you're just scrolling and scrolling until you find the best deal online or the best pizza place that sounds good. Occasionally, you have that one restaurant that you love and you may order direct from it, but a lot of times you're still going back to the third party app just out of simplicity and ease. So instead of launching a loyalty program, we launched a, re a rewards program where if you ordered from wowbow.com, and I hope next time you order from WowBow, you do WowBow.com. Uh, and the reason why we did that, that's powered by DoorDash. So on the back, back side, it's DoorDash running it. But because it comes through our website, we get to collect customer data so we can do better marketing. We understand our consumer better, and we actually are able to communicate with you if need be. So we did a rewards program. For every dollar you spend at WowBow.com, you, you get a point. You spend $100, you get seven points, or $7, I'm sorry. So the idea is on your fifth order, because our check average at the time was about $25, you would get $7 put into your wallet for you to use when you order again. And it went nice and people liked it and everything was great about it. And then our private equity group who's involved with us started talking to us about NFTs. And we have to have NFTs. We're gonna sell thousands of these things. We're gonna you know, break the bank with how much money we're gonna make and we could have a lot of fun with this. And they came to us about it out of their portfolio group because we've always been early adapters of technology. We had self-ordering kiosks in 2010. We had, you guys will laugh, but we had online ordering in 2010. And you're all young, so you don't remember 2010, but nobody had online ordering in 2010. In fact, in 2010, we had a, an app in the App Store. There were 300,000 apps only at that time. So we, and I said we had the full service restaurant with no human interaction, so we've always done technology. So we started investigating the NFT space and how we wanted to play in that world. And over the last year, arguably, NFTs have gotten a negative connotation, crypto sort of changed what was going on with it. So instead of let's sell a lot of NFTs and make a lot of money, it's more about how do we enhance this rewards program that we got? How do we grow loyalty? And the, that the basis of the NFT, aside from supposedly making money, was about building community. And I've heard people on the stage today really talking about how important community is to the Web3. So we looked at it as a way to do community and grow and really interact with people, bless you. So we started on this journey over the last year about creating our NFT program. And it went from NFTs to what we call digital collectibles now. So we created digital a collective bows. Well, digital collective bows. There you but go. We started collectibles. Thank you. Glad my PR people aren't here. My marketing people don't don't rat me out on that one. Um, and the idea of it is, we created a membership program. Now, a lot of things in the restaurant right now. If anyone eats a Panera bread, they have a subscription plan, right? You go get your free coffee every day or your drink, and other restaurants are doing such a thing. We don't do that. And again, in our delivery space, with our 700 locations across the US and Canada, we do not own any of those locations, right? We're inside other restaurants. So I can't give you stuff because it comes out of another restaurant's pocket. The way that it works on wowbow.com is we control those funds and that's how I'm able to reward you. So we couldn't really do a subscription model. So we took this digital collectible, the digital collectible idea, and we created it where for $99, you get a collectible, a 
collect a bow, that's our NFT. It's digitally randomized, unique per person with a whole bunch of characteristics. The artist is a uh, mom, if anyone knows Man Over Mars, uh, James Byrne, Byrne, I believe is how you say his last name. Uh, great artist, a lot of fun, and that's all powered by Flaunt. And uh, for the $99, you get your collectible. It goes in your wallet, you put it in the blockchain, it's on Polygon. For us, you do not need crypto. You can buy it with an email and a credit card. And then you get additional benefits. When you order at wowbout.com, you get 10% off your order. You order from our merchandise store, you get a percentage off. You get double reward points every time you order. So instead of getting $7 after your fourth order, you can get $7 after your second order now. And we did our first minting, we called it the first course, because we're restaurant people. And our second course, which is planned to be sometime in the next two to three months, I think. This just launched, by the way, three and a half weeks ago, so we just did this. Uh, our second course that we're already planning will have additional benefits. You know, it might be 3X on your reward points, it might be a higher percentage off. But here's the kicker for me, because again, I talked about rewards versus loyalty. And I know this is a very long-winded answer, and I know you're all really paying attention, I appreciate that, but remember, I'm the only panelist, so I gotta talk long. Um, when you go to a restaurant, and you're loyal to the restaurant, and the restaurant considers you a loyal guest, you usually get sat before other people. You may get a free dessert. When I was growing up in the restaurant industry, the greatest thing that could happen to you in a restaurant, if you were loyal, was the chef came out of the kitchen in his chef whites and actually put food down on the table in front of you. Like, the restaurant would stop. It would be like one of those silly movies where the, the, re the record player goes, Arr! right, and everyone stops. Ali did that to wake you up. So we were thinking, how do we get that loyalty? And one of the ideas we came up with on this next course, which again, we're gonna charge a little more money for because you get better perks. Wouldn't it be great if you could Zoom with our chef? Now our chef has worked in about 15 different lettuce concepts from very, very, very high-end fine dining to quick serve restaurants. And imagine you were at home and you were making shrimp scampi and you were missing an item. Wouldn't it be cool to be able to communicate with a chef and say, how do I do this, or what do I do instead, or what do you think of this idea? That, to me, is how you create community. And that, to me, is extreme, extreme value, and that should happen to a loyal guest. Not everybody should get that. So I know we're doing a membership type thing, but really, I would think the most loyal guest is who wants to join the membership program. So those are some of the ideas that we're working towards and the reason why. That's great, thanks Jeff. And you talked about the sort of storied history of, of innovation that WowBow has undergone over the, the past decade or so. Um, and, and I'm curious, you know, why is innovation so critical to your business as you think about a highly competitive restaurant industry? Do you see that as, as part of what makes WowBow unique is your innovative approach and I guess, more plainly, why is innovation important to WowBow? Yeah, it's a good question. So I have a 24-year-old and I have a 12-year-old, second marriage for those who are worried about the math, right? Um, so I've, and I'm older, <laughs> so I played in three different or four different generations, basically, of technology. You know, and it's funny, for those, none of you are gonna know this joke, but I feel like my grandparents and the VCR is blinking 12 o'clock all the time now. Two people got that joke. Okay, see? You're, you're aging yourself, though. How about your, your tape and the tape deck got stuck and you need a pencil to unwind it? More people knew that one. That's surprising. Okay. You can Google both of those for you young guys. Um, but look, the first thing is with the restaurant industry is you need to evolve. Evolution is key, right? And when you go out to dine, you might go to that same restaurant you went to a long time ago, but chances are it's different somehow. The food evolved the decor evolved, absolutely the employees evolved, and the way the employees interact with you is different than how they did back in the day when you first started going there as a child. So evolution is key. And the way that we really started doing technology, so I've always enjoyed technology. You know, I was the one who would go around to friends' houses and, you know, fix their VCR that was flashing. And I enjoy, you know, learning new things. 
and I learned a lot today, and I hope you did too with the earlier presentations and maybe something out of this one. But the, the, the idea of technology in the restaurant space, here's the hard part for us. No technology in the restaurant space is made by restaurant people. It's all made by other people. And you have to take your business and you have to be willing to change your business to accept that technology, which means your employees are gonna be negatively affected. Hopefully they'll see the positive and be positively affected, but there's gonna be hurdles, there's gonna be headaches, and there's gonna be confusion. That technology you're bringing in is most likely fully understood by the consumer and they're happy you have it, but the operations have to figure it out. So we always have a, a saying in our business, are you threatened or are you challenged? And I like to be challenged. I think if your employees are challenged, if you're challenged, that's how you grow and that's how you evolve. I said earlier, I took over Wild Bow in 2009. So that 2008, I think it was, we were voting for president. And I waited outside online for 45 minutes to vote. When I finally got inside in the room, they said it's gonna be another 45 minutes to cast my vote, but if I wanted to, there's a machine over there in the corner and I can use it and vote and nobody else was using the machine. And I said, will my vote count? And they said, you're in Illinois, you don't even need to vote, but yeah, it'll work. And as I'm sitting there pushing the buttons, I'm thinking this is how we should be ordering food at Wowbow. And that's why we went to self-ordering kiosks. Now in 2010, when we launched the kiosks, that was bank ATMs, movie theaters, and airlines. Nobody else had self-ordering kiosks. You could say a gas station had it maybe, right? Because you paid at the pump. So we were early adopters to it. And then once you're an early adopter of something, you want more technology. You want more evolution. You want more innovation. It brings better employees to you. It gets you great opportunities like this and press. It brings more eyes on what you're doing. And you have to be willing to have the headache. However, if you take on the headache, you're allowed to help write the narrative going forward with those tech people because they want the feedback. And that's another thing we look at with Web3 and what we're doing with digital collectibles. We think that we can help write the narrative. Right now, today, in today's uh, social settings, most people still do not understand NFTs or Web3 or where it's going or how to get there. So the audience, will be a little bit more forgiving for us as we try to build a loyalty member, as we try to create community, as we try to make benefits and have people pay for them and get a reward. We can, I don't wanna say screw up right now, but there's such an opportunity for a learning curve from us and for the guest that we can do things that people 18 to 36 months from now, when everybody's playing in this space, they won't be able to be forgiven as much. And we've had a lot of success by being, accept, by being accepted as being an early adopter. You, You're doing so well on time. <laughs> I love it, thank you. Um, you talked about the distinction between a rewards program, which is kind of the, the standard earn and burn points program that you, you implemented versus a loyalty program. I, I'm curious, you know, what, what exactly does loyalty mean to wow bow, what does it mean in the, in the restaurant construct? You know, what are some of the tangible measures that you're looking to drive in your business by launching this Web3 loyalty program? What problems is it solving for you? Wow, great, great question. We should have given these to me earlier. So think about who you're loyal to, right? Why are you loyal to them? It's rhetorical, you don't need to raise your hand, I'm not gonna call on you. But think about why you're loyal to them and think about if you had a choice to make, wouldn't you choose who you're loyal to over the other option? I never cared about airlines. For me, whatever is cheapest, who cares, I'll just get there. And my wife, second wife, last wife, only wife, um, is all about American Airlines. So we used to fly American Airlines, or we still fly, but we were on American Airlines and you know, I couldn't get on the plane. Right? Stand by, nope, you're not gonna make it, or you can't sit together, I'm in the back of the plane. And I understood status all of a sudden. So now I'm, I'm yay American, but I travel now for business, so I got another credit card, so now I'm also yay United, because we're a hub here, right? So now I have those two airlines. 
If the price is pretty close, I always go with American. Can't tell you why. Both planes get me there. United planes are actually newer, I feel like, and the United clubs are nicer. But I'm American for whatever reason. That's what loyalty means to me. If you're going to go out today, and I have a location on State and Lake Street here in the Loop in Chicago, and a half a block away, Panda Express opened up. I don't think we're the same food. I don't think we're competitors. I think 99.9% .9 of America would say they're both Chinese food. Which one should I go eat at? Well, if you're loyal to Wow Bao, it's an easy question. If you're not loyal to either one, it's a coin flip. So loyalty is important. And for us, because we're growing at this rate where we have zero interaction with the consumer, they're not getting food from my restaurant. They're getting food from TGI Fridays or Fazoli's or Ruby Tuesdays or Sizzler or half a dozen other restaurants you may have heard of. There's a trust factor that the food's going to be good. There's a trust factor the food's going to be right. There's a trust factor the food's going to be on time. So how do you get that trust? That's building community and building loyalty. And it's not just one way. It's not the consumer just being loyal to me. I have to be loyal to that consumer. I have to hear what they're asking for. I have to respond to their need. And Web3, with this membership club that we've created, and I'll be honest, truth on the table here, we have not launched the community aspect yet. Okay, it's been three and a half weeks. I don't have the bandwidth for it. We need to figure some pieces out. Because once you open that door for that inbound communication, you need to respond and you need to adjust. And I'll be honest, we're not there yet. We have every intention, but we haven't turned it on. But that, because, so if I did turn that on today without the bandwidth, how bad would that trust come out? Right? I would kill every what piece that we're trying to do. But we've made a promise on our website that we're going to do it. So we have to deliver on that. That's how you build loyalty. Loyalty is what's going to allow you to mess up and people will let you try again. And loyalty is what will get people to come and recommend you and grow with you and evolve with you to continue your business. Yeah, I was, I was going to, uh, just, just to double click on that last point, you know, advocacy is such an important component of the loyalty equation for, for so many brands. And I, I guess I'm curious, you know, not having that direct relationship operating almost exclusively with the exception of maybe Chicago and a few other brick and mortar locations out of other restaurants, how important is advocacy in the loyalty equation for, for WowBow? So, you probably, most of you in the room, I'm going to guess everyone in the room has ordered from a third-party delivery app. And I will bet whatever your favorite restaurant is that you can order from is available on at least two out of the three big three, right? DoorDash, Uber, and Grubhub. But for some reason, you're probably always ordering from the same third-party app. That third-party app does not give you loyalty points or reward points. Now, I understand maybe you're paying the fee to be on FastPass with DoorDash or Uber One, or you got your Grubhub Plus because they partner with Amazon Prime, right? I, I throw that aside, because that's all in the last year and a half. Prior to that, you own one third-party delivery app that is your go-to. For my wife, by the way, it's Caviar. If anyone remembers Caviar, she still likes Caviar. I think DoorDash bought them. Anyway, when you ask why is loyalty important in the advocacy part of it, I think that's the answer that speaks for itself, is it's my job to get people off the third-party app and go to wowbow.com. It's better for us financially. It's better for us to get data so we can market better, so we can help our partners. Remember, I need that partner in Poughkeepsie, New York, to do well in sales so they don't turn off wowbow. How do I drive business to that operator in Poughkeepsie, New York? Well, my in-house PR person is calling the Poughkeepsie whatever newspaper to see if they'll write a story about us, that we're available, and we're reaching out to the Poughkeepsie radio station to see if they do something. But at the end of the day, if I get what people on wowbow.com, I can target them better because I know more about them. So by having trust and honest and building a community with relationship, 
we can now drive that business to that random city in random part of the country where I have no control over where people are choosing to dine. Jeff, when, when we met, um, Wowbow had, had already sort of announced it was going to be entering the, the metaverse, um, you know, when, when Flaunt came into the equation, and we helped kind of get you to the, the, the finish line through our, our platform. Can you just take the audience through the journey from that first conversation with your investors to three weeks ago when we launched? Um, and then we'll get into in, in, in a little bit, you know, sort of what's to come. But walk us through that journey. Who are all the stakeholders involved? Um, and, and how can the folks in the audience sort of practically think about the steps to launching, you know, not just a loyalty program, but a loyalty program that's including some new and emerging technologies that um, are kind of confusing. So through our private equity group, we got turned on to a company called Brightloom. Little backstory here. I told you that I was working with a fully automated restaurant, right? We're in no human interaction. There was a company in San Francisco, I'm gonna make up a number and say eight years ago, called Eatsa, E-A-T-S-A. And it got all the press you could possibly imagine. And I, the day it opened, the next day I flew to San Francisco to see this restaurant, because it was revolutionary. Well, fast forward to 2017 when Valor Equity Partners became our investor. Valor was an investor in Eatsa by chance. And Eatsa rebranded its name into Brightloom. Brightloom CEO uh, is, a, is a fantastic person, Adam Brotman. He created the digital flywheel for Starbucks, right? So all of you guys with your Starbucks app, he created that. Brilliant guy, couldn't be nicer. Well, when he got out of the, uh, the, the cubby uh, system for the restaurants, of course, we had to close it. And they went and did their thing and we went and did our thing. And when Valor came back and said, you got to get into the NFTs, you should call Adam over at Brightloom. He's sort of leading the space and understanding it and helping to work with things. So you heard on the last panel, Starbucks Odyssey is getting involved with this, right? With Web3, that's Brightloom. Okay, who's doing it? So give us a big name behind the scenes. Um, so we called Brightloom to learn about it. And Brightloom became our, our consultant on how to do this. And what was funny about it is it was never, ever discussed with us how we were gonna pull this off. They were just telling us like, we're gonna go do this and this is why you should do it and here's the benefits of it and don't worry, it's all taken care of. And we launched on May 15th, right? Or whatever that Wednesday was, I guess it was the 17th of May. And I think we met on April 1st, right? Like you guys rocked it out in four weeks. And we, the contract was signed on like March 3rd or okay. something like so that. So that means on March 2nd, Brightly introduced us. <laughs> So for people who told me like a year ago, don't worry, we got everything, literally at the finish line, they, they, made, they introduced us. But so we started this conversation with Brightloom about how to do uh, NFTs. And they had us down one path. And as I said earlier, we were gonna make all this money and sell all these things. And the world started changing its mind on crypto. And we were over here, and all of a sudden Brightloom was over here about how we need to do this. And all they talked to, to us about was community. It was no more about, you're not gonna make any money, Jeff. Like, you're not gonna sell these things. No one's gonna buy them, but you gotta have a community involved. Well, we're a small, nimble group. I know I talk about 4,000 groceries and 700 locations, but there's like 22 of us in an office, right, who's running this because we build the plane as we fly it. So all of a sudden, they want us to talk about community and we didn't even know what community was. We didn't understand what community was. Please understand, I know what community is. I'm talking about in the Web3, in the metaverse. They wanted us to understand now that we have to talk to people and interact with people and answer their questions and be available to them and let them vote on things and then whatever they vote on, we have to do it. That's a scary thing for a small business. I'm gonna let people decide what we're doing. Like, that's crazy. So. We spent eight months trying to figure out where we were going and how to get there, and we brought in another group called Riot Racers. Anybody ever hear of Riot Racers? Good thing we didn't do it with Riot Racers. Riot Racers uh, is a Web3 racing game where you can buy a car 
and like that fast happens the race, right? But you can go backwards and actually see the race and get the details about it. And we partnered with Riot Racers and they created Wowbow Cars. They created a Wowbow Driver. And the idea of it was we were gonna hire somebody who was gonna race for us. You could go out there and race, right? You pay X amount of dollars to race and you can win X amount of money and we were gonna do this and we were gonna have cars and you could win a car and you could buy a car and you could have in the metaverse, there'd be you know, the, the, the plane flying by with the banner and so on and so there was all this advertising going on of, for our introduction to the space. So now we got Brightloom, we've got Riot Racers and we're off to the race, so to speak. And then we got turned on with you guys and uh, you built our entire back end and how to buy things and we worked together on the creation of the characters. Brightloom also got us a uh, mom for our artist. And then we also partnered with a company called, oh, I should back up. Our rewards program is powered by a company called Patronix. Probably anyone who has a rewards program is probably powered by Patronix, you don't know that. And we introduced you guys together so we were able to make this as, as, as seamless as possible. And then there's a group in New York City called Devour. And Devour is like another third-party delivery platform, except they want you to pay with crypto. And they want it to be available to you that if you own an NFT at this company, but you buy food from that company, there's a trading going on behind the seeds and there's different offers and it's all brand new. I mean, they're three or five months old, I think. So we brought them into the mix. So now we had first in class in how to create the, the idea, which was Brightloom. You guys, Patronix, who powers all, basically everybody's uh, loyalty programs, and this delivery system, because we're in the delivery space of food. And I left eight and a half minutes for questions. <laughs> well, I, I just have one more question for, for you, Jeff, which is just, you know, innovators never stop innovating. You talked about how important innovation is to your business. What's next? What's, what's coming in that, in that second course? You teed it up a little bit with community, with the, the Zoom with the chef, but um, anything else that you want to kind of leave, leave the audience with to, uh, to look forward to? Yeah, thank you for letting me say that. So we recently launched hot food vending machines. We have about 40 of them deployed across the country right now. They're in college campuses, hospitals, some airports. They're great. They hold our food in a refrigerator for four or five days. You put your money in and in 32 seconds out comes hot food. And my goal, where I'm trying to go with this, is when you're in the metaverse and you're wearing your Apple VR goggles or you're playing Fortnite or Roblox and you're in your game that you stumble upon one of our vending machines. And you would push the buttons on the vending machine, like any old vending machine, but it actually takes you to our delivery page, powered by wowbow.com and DoorDash, and food, all of a sudden, the doorbell rings. So you've never left your gaming environment or whatever it is you're doing, and food gets delivered to you because you didn't need to pause to make a phone call or get out of your game to go on to online to order. That's where we're trying to get to. That's sort of, you know, that's going to be the, the grand slam for me in regards to the metaverse and where we're going with Web3. Amazing. Thanks. It looks like we have about seven and a half minutes left, Kristen, if... Kristen's going to be walking around with the mic for anybody who has any questions for Jeff. Like Chris said, this is your chance to ask a food CEO and president whatever you want to know. Any questions? All right, well, okay. any last Off thoughts? the hook. I thank you. <laughs> Thanks, you know everybody. what? We'll give this seven minutes back to Jordan. <laughs> thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you.